सभी को सादर जय जी निंद्रा मैं हूँ स्मिता मैं जैन फाउंडेशन की रिप्रेजेंटेटिव हूँ और मैं आप सभी का यहाँ पे आई वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन दिस फर्स्ट इंटरक्टिव सेशन विथ आर इंस्ट्रक्टर एंड वी आर सो फॉर्चुनेट दैट वी आर वी टूडे नॉट जस्ट आर इंस्ट्रक्टर वी हैव द फाउंडर ऑफ अरिहंता इंस्टीट्यूट विद एस टूडे मिस्टर प्रवीण जैन सर थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ग्रेसिंग आर प्लेटफॉर्म टूडे and uh, of course uh, i would like all of you to know that uh, mr pramod khincha he is the one who is the point of contact and who's helping me out to connect our work and to connect and get yes sir thank you so much sir uh, pramod ji to uh, come and you know be us and thank you so much for bringing this amazing course on to jain platform uh, play jain foundations platform so many people are going to benefit uh, with this i i can't tell you how how happy i am that all three of you the key member key people have joined today on the, this very first session thank you so much and would request you to talk about a little bit about arihant institute itself about its vision and how it started and that please go ahead and introduce our teacher to our students thank you so much sir jay jinendr um i would like to start with uh, a chant of namokar mantra one time and then we will uh, get with our uh, program so namokar mantra om namo arihantanam namo siddhanam namo ayariyanam namo uvajjhayanam namo loye savvasahunam eso panch namokaro sav pav panashno मंगलाणम च सव्वे सिंह परम हवई मंगलम जय जिनेन स्मिता जी थैंक यू वेरी मच फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फॉर ब्रिंगिंग दिस कोर्स टू आवर फ्रेंड्स इन इंडिया एंड आई आई बिलीव पीपल फ्रॉम अदर कंट्रीज आर आल्सो अटेंडिंग सो थैंक यू वेरी मच जस्ट अ कपल ऑफ वर्ड्स एंड एलन गाव again uh, great to see you my friend uh, and uh, uh, before we hand it over to alan ji i want to talk about a little bit of arihant institute uh, we are uh, in our third or sometimes you can say even fourth year of our uh, since our inception uh, but uh, 2022 was our first year when we came to uh, the audiences around the world uh, the main purpose of our institution is to bring the great teachings of our uh, jain philosophy to the community around the world uh, jains as well as non jains uh, because the message of ahimsa and uh, uh, karuna are so important in these days that uh, we want the world to know what uh, uh, what are the methods what are the easy ways of applying these principles in their daily life uh we want to make it very accessible essentially what we say is that we are democratizing jain studies by making them accessible to everyone around the world uh it has been uh, in our mind for a long time uh and this messaging is very important uh within our and and we can see that the people are hungry for this kind of knowledge these kind of teachings uh within our first year or year and a half of our operations we have had students coming from 15 different countries uh to attend our courses maybe even more than that now uh all five continents inhabited by humanity and then um, uh about i would say around 550 plus students have attended our courses within the just first couple of years in addition to the courses that you are attending we have ma degree program uh, which is accredited in india it's called deemed degree uh, we are offering that with our partner kalyan claremont school of theology uh, and around 18 students are taking our courses in that as well Uh, the third thing we are doing is bringing conferences and the conferences the objective is to to bring the scholars uh, like alan gov together so that they can 
present their ideas and general audience can learn from the research, from the work uh, they are doing. Uh, you'll be surprised how many educators are actually bringing Jain teachings uh, to the world. Uh, and it's, it's really uh, very humbling to see all of these professors, the quality of work, the amount of work that they're doing. And these conferences, we want to bring them together on a platform, which is again, first time uh, in the world. MA degree, as well as these uh, conferences, the way we are structuring, the way we are offering, nobody has ever done it. And the sole purpose is to bring out the teachings of Lord Mahavir uh, to common people and accessible because it's all online. Anybody can access our teachings anytime from wherever they are. So that has been the experience and we are gonna continue that. You'll hear more and more from us. Right now we have about 40 courses, uh, uh, all areas that are very important for humanity, uh, like animal uh, uh, advocacy, animal uh, um, sort of uh, treatment, then environment, social justice, professional life, and more importantly, our own, how we want to be kind to ourselves, uh, take care of ourselves, take care of our well-being. So these are the areas where Jain philosophy has touched all these areas, where Jain philosophy has great teachings to, to improve us, to help us improve in all of these areas. And we are doing that. Uh, so hopefully we'll see more and more people coming to our courses. Thank you very much for taking time to attend our course. Uh, and I'm sure uh, you are learning a lot. Uh, and today is the first Q&A session. Uh, and I want to thank my friend, Alan Gao, uh, first of all, to putting this course together for us. Uh, and she has done just tremendous job because over the year and a half, this course has been available. A lot of people have attended it. And she's always available to, to participate in any kind of conversation discussions. She's a researcher. Uh, in Jain philosophy, has spent is spending full time on that area in that area, but more importantly, she's focused on the the the, the mantras and their how they affect our thinking, how they affect our behavior, and what are the roots of mantras, history of mantras. Uh, so she and this is one of the courses she has done, but she specializes in that. Uh, she's currently assistant professor at Emory University has done PhD from Yale, has spent a lot of time in India uh, to study uh, a sort of Jain uh, uh, literature under some of our Gurujis and attend uh, ceremonies. So they can, she, attend, she can first and learn how Jain mantras and Jain philosophy applies to our life. Thank you very much, Alan, for devoting all this time and your, your uh, sort of career to the teachings of Jain philosophy. Thank you very much. Hand it over to you, Ellen. Okay, great. Thank you so much for that introduction. I'm so happy to be here. Um, I was told that this would be a sort of Q and A uh, session. Have you have you watched any of the lectures or? Promote can coordinate this session. Yeah, I will okay. coordinate this session, and uh, I think yeah, these are all students who are enrolled, Ellen, and. Uh, uh, I've been sending instructions on week one, week two. They've completed week one. We're trying to do it in a little bit of a uh, cohesive manner such that everyone go and uh, moves along together. So I think some might have got a, gotten ahead, some might not have gotten ahead. Uh, but um, my hope is everyone's gone through week one. So for everyone, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've gone through week one and you have a lot of questions on your mind. Uh, uh, we will do a Q&A and a little bit of an open uh, session about week one. Uh, we will, if there are any questions regarding support and I will take it offline and Smitaji and I will coordinate if there's support related questions about how to access the course and how to access material. But if you have questions around uh, week one and week two, if uh, people have gone ahead, but week one would be good because vast majority of the audience are uh, yeah. have Join completed this. week one. Yep. And yep. Ellen, for you, you could generally give an overview, a little bit of the structure. So this might be 
uh, slightly different than uh, a lot of the other students. So what they should expect. So that'll be valuable to start off with an intro and then we'll kick off, kick it off. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks so much for this. Yeah. So lecture one was <laughs> sort of the overview, my vision, my hope for the course. I envision the course as looking at the history and I think, well, I shouldn't be critical of the course. I, you can criticize the course down the line in the Q and A's. Sometimes I maybe went too into the weeds of history and things like this, and I maybe should have uh, focused on practical application of mantras um, more. But my vision was maybe I'm speaking to people who are already kind of know the practical application. Maybe they say the Namakar Mantra every day and they maybe want to know um, the history of the Namakar Mantra, what the Namakar Mantra means, something like this. So anyway, I envisioned the course as um, starting out with the foundations of the philosophy of Jain mantras and what mantras do in the world um, and how basically they destroy karma, how recitations to destroy karma and really can transform our worlds, transform our souls. And I based that off of the commentary the, on the Shatkandagam, the Dhavala of uh, Virasena's um, commentary on this important Digambar scripture, the Shatkandagama. So that's sort of foundations. And then I moved through and looked at um, specific Jain mantras, of course, the Namakar mantra, and then all these mantras that relate basically relate to the normal karma mantra because when you're talking Jainism, everything come back comes back to the normal karma mantra. So we looked at Ardham, Hrim, and Om. Like, what is the Jain interpretation of Om? What is the Jain interpretation of Hrim? And then how they connect to ritual and then also material practice. You know, Siddha Chakra. We went. We have a unit on the development of these yantras and the ritual use of the yantras and the relationship to narrative and ritual so siddha chakra if you hear about hrim you might think rishi mandal history of the rishi mandal differences between digambras and shaitambras over the rishi mandal um and then i drew upon uh, my research for my dissertation in india with a particular monk of the tapagach uh, nandigosh suriji he has basically been my sort of guru and guide and I'm so thankful for his mentorship and he um guided me in the use of a mantra that is only able to be recited by acharyas maybe you've heard of the suri mantra so when you are promoted to the highest rank of mendicancy in shaitanya jainism and you become an acharya you receive the suri mantra um your guru whispers it in your ear and then you receive a a part a cloth diagram of the suri mantra that you, you that acharyas use in r ritual worship um every day and then the Suri Mantra is recited every day. Anyway, so I had a session on that too. The mantras of mendicants that lay people act, cannot recite. We weren't reciting these mantras at all because we're, we don't have the, the adhikar. We don't have the right to re recite those um, mantras. And then the last session is, yeah, more on practical um, benefits of mantras, mantras and science. So hopefully that's an overview. Hopefully you got an, a sense of the course from the first lecture yes as well but i like that we have this q a because you can ask all the questions that i don't cover in the lectures because this is the thing about this course is as i was writing these lectures i'm thinking oh i'm gonna have this diverse audience it's gonna be online for years like how can i cover everything oh oh my gosh so this is great we can cover more stuff that's not not included so hopefully, I guess that's my goal of these sessions. I don't know what the goal of these sessions is. Yeah, I, I think it's a little open-ended. And I think okay. uh, I will lead off with a question for myself, maybe the others as I go okay. through this. So I don't know if there was a definitive proof one way or other. You do allude to it about the origins of the Namokar Mantra. Maybe you could speak a little bit about the origin of the Namokar Mantra. I, I know it was either adapted or it started off with just four and five so you could speak a little bit of that the, yeah how it all yeah. started is there's definitive research or no definitive research 
Okay. Okay. Definitely. So there is indefinite research. I mean, we can say that the normal karma is eternal. I mean, because that's that's what a lot of Jain's scriptures say that there's no. So no, you know, number one is it's eternal. And when we read narratives about Parshva and we read narratives about the Tirthankaras through the normal karma mantra. So that's answer number one, is it's eternal and the Tirthankaras knew it. Answer number two, if we're going historically with like the data we have in this world today, inscriptions and in texts. Okay, so you said that it started out with one or two. Are you referencing these these caves in Orissa, the Caravella okay. cave, yeah. cave yeah. that that inscription. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So there there are very early um inscriptions, early century BCE, of two lines. And I believe it's Namojinanam. Now I should I'm being recorded, so I should uh I should um look it up. This is, I should I should know this because it is in the first chapter of of my book, but I think it's Namo Siddhanam and Namo Jiranam, but I have to uh, look it up. Does anyone know these 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 inscriptions by this yeah. king? So these Siddhanam famous uh, and... king. Yeah. Yeah. Namo Siddhanam and Namo Loisa Wasahunam. Okay. Yeah. Namo Loisa Wasahunam. Okay, thanks. Right. I mean, that, okay, so this is the question. Is that the begin? is that the, is that the Namo Karma Mantra? Is that the mantra? Or is that just praising to the Siddhas? Praise to the Siddhas and praise to Namolohe Savisana, all the sadhus in the world. Um, I think we can say that this understanding of praising these bunch of nations was there. Then. And thankfully, we have an inscription. So we have that in the Caravilla Caves. Now, actual, the five lines together in a text that has been dated is at the outset of the Shatkandagama. Question when was the Shatkandagama? How did we date any of these things? I don't know. Scholars have, okay, this is how we date them. They say that it was composed this many generations after the death of Mahavir. So we have the death of Mahavir, we have 527 BCE. So we can do that and we can say, okay, Shatkandagama was composed in the first century uh ce <clears throat> and it was um at the outset of the first chapter of this scripture the gumber scripture basically on karma theory they have a mangala or an auspicious invocation at that at the outset you know at the outset of text you have om namo shivaya or whatever to make sure that uh the the to ensure the effective um, completion of the texts. So that's when we have um, the first five lines, the Aso Panchanaro Savapava Panasano. That doesn't come until much later. And in again, this is in texts that we have. So mm -hmm. again, it could be eternal. But in texts that we have, we have in the Mahanasiha Sutta, which is a Jeda Sutra. So if you look at it's in a Shaitam text. And a Shaitambara text on monastic rules, which is much, 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 much later and is actually written in a different type of Prakrit. So you can look at language developments too. So the Shatkandagam was supposed to be composed in what's called Shorasaini, this ancient dialect of India. And the Mahansiha Sutta is written in a later Maharashtri. Um, and because of that, the language is slightly different. And one of the differences is the na. It's a no, 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 no. I, my pronunciation is so bad. I've had monks say like, don't recite mantras because it's <laughs> like pronunciation is very important. So, um, but I sure you surely you know what I'm talking about. But no, for the normal versus a dead na in the Maharashtri, in the later Prakrit. That has become a source of contention. I don't know. I would love to ask you guys if, if that is a source of contention because there are scriptures and scriptures and scriptures and scriptures on the proper pronunciation of this and the power of a single syllable. So if it is true that this pronunciation will change everything, 
then it does make a big difference if it's a no or a no. And we have two different versions in these two different scriptures with a nomo versus a nomo. And I have found, but you can tell me if I'm wrong, that digovers more often do a no, no more, no more, no more, no more coming out of Shat Khandagam, whereas this, uh, and uh, and sometimes don't have this final part, Aso Banamokaro, um, and just prefer the five. And then Shaitambaras have um, the whole the whole bit with the na, dental na. Did that answer your question at all? We have this, in, basically we have this inscription and then we have Shat Khandagam for the first century CE. And then we have interesting variants like at the outside of the outside of the Bhagavati Sutra. Now I have to know look. But the Bhagavati Sutra, this is again how these things are dated. Bhagavati Sutra is probably late. So we have these, okay, if you read the end of the Kalpa Sutra, um, I don't know if you're reading the you're probably reading in Pajushan, you're probably here, maybe if you're Shutambar and Pajushan, you're hearing the Kalpa Sutra and the stories of the lives of the of Mahavira. And at the end it says, we met it gives a, a date. It says, we met here, the council, to codify the Agamas, to codify the scriptures. So we can kind of eat the Kalpa Sutra and uh, texts that were codified around that time, so maybe like the 6th century CE. So that's later. But again, like these scriptures developed over time and were passed orally, so you can't really date these scriptures and say, oh, that's 6th century CE. But anyway, so... Scholars put the Bhagavati Sutra in the 6th century CE. It's the largest text of the Shaitambara canon. It's huge, 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 huge. It contains everything. And uh, it so it's probably the latest that was codified at this council of books. And uh, they have a different version of, should I look up the different version of the, do you know what that is? I think it, it, it praises the scripture as well, the Shruta. It has an extra line. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? I can look this up too. But basically, Shat Khandagam is the earliest for CC. Anything to say about this no versus no? Does anyone have feedback on that? Uh, yeah, everybody should ask okay, how they recite it as well. Yeah. 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 Anybody, please, an audience, please be free. It's a very interactive session. It has to be like that. So just open your windows and please interact. Grab the opportunity, teachers talking. And uh, I am not uh, very well versed about it. So I'm not even... Yeah, you can raise a virtual hand and then I will uh, spotlight you. Uh, yeah, Pragya Jain. Yes, go ahead. And I, I request to the audience, please mute your screens. Uh, Pragya Jain ji, yes. Hi. Uh, hello, Dr. Arvind. Um, uh, you were talking about no and no in the Namukar Mantra. And I think uh, since we have been taught uh, to speak it as no, uh, and also in Prakrit, it, it is no becomes no. I mean, no is more popular. No is more authentic as we have been taught. Uh, but in maybe in Ardhamagdi, no remains no. So maybe it's the uh, Prakrit issue or uh, um, yeah, because the yeah. whole yeah. is no. Is no. Because Namokar Mantra is a Prakrit, so it must be no. Right. Yeah. So this version in the Mahanasihat Sutta is in a later Prakrit. It's in Maharashtra. Yeah. It's a much later text, mm -hmm. like 8th century CE. Uh, Mr. Akash, do you have to uh, say anything on it? You can unmute yourself. Akash ji. Okay. Uh, hello. Yes, yes, yes. Please go ahead. Yeah, as uh, we 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 see both the examples as there, as the we found the scripture of Carvel that uh, when it's translation uh, translated, then the starting no, no comes. And yeah, exactly. In, so the early, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and it is to be preferred as the uh, means earliest. 
Uh, oldest yeah. uh, scripture we found about the Dampokar mantra. Yeah, that inscription that I was talking about of the king. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, so it's confirmed that Shabunga. And that's the proper I don't know. I mean I've had I've had uh people tell me both ways. Um and then I've certainly seen it both ways too, inscribed on posters and things. I've seen yes. it I've seen it yes. both both ways. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, um, uh, Pramoji, I would request you there, uh, uh, students directly sending you messages. Could you please uh, take a couple of them? I, uh, I will. Uh, uh, this is from uh, Romil Turakya Ji. Uh, does your uh, research into the history of Jainism show if Jainism was always there or did it come into being a 5th century uh, BCE based on the mantras which we see? Is the question which uh, Romil Turakya Ji asks. Oh gosh, I don't, I mean, this is the thing about ancient history. I don't want to say anything. What do I know? But scholars have said, so another debate is whether Parshva. Okay, so I think it's pretty clear that Mahavira was a historical uh, figure and uh, was referred to not as Mahavira, but yeah, Putta in Buddhists. Nigant also, right? Mahavira in Buddhist scriptures. And so that means probably that he was a historical figure. The question is Barshva. I would love to get your guys' feedback on this too. Is was Parshva a historical figure? So Parshva was supposed to live 250 years before Mahavira, I believe, in, in Banaras. There isn't a lot of evidence that Parshva actually lived. There are some um, debates between, there's one There's one famous debate in the early Tambara scriptures between a follower of Parshva and a follower of Mahavir. So Gautam, the follower of Mahavir, and then Kesi, the follower of Parshva. And they're debating over how many vows um, Jain should take. And followers of Parshva just to have four vows. And followers of Mahavir have five vows. And I believe followers of Parshva don't have celibacy, which is interesting. We can get into it. Anyway, so scholars have argued um that suggests that there was a tradition that existed before Mahavira of four vows and I think they're right right like why would they record this dialogue of debating like four vows versus five vows so there was probably some sort of tradition that existed before Mahavira came and we have in the Acharanga Sutra Mahavira gains in omniscience Keval Gyan and then he gives the five vows so that's very clear that's what Mahavira says um, and then we have this dialogue between four and five. Um, so that's like that something was happening before Mahavira historically. Now, before that, who knows? But again, this is ancient history. So like, who knows what happened back then? We can only talk about the evidence that we have, which are the scriptures of the final Tirtankara, Mahavira, and then la much later inscriptions. I don't know if that answered your question. If the person who asked the question would jump in. So I'll just clarify my question. Thank you uh, for attempting to answer it. I, um, for in the beginning, in the introduction, it was said that you, you've done some historical research. So probably my question was misplaced. However, my question was really about, you know, in the scriptures, I think somewhere it says Jainism was anadi and anant, which means is without beginning and without end. It's always been there. Uh, our history books in India at least show us that uh, 5th century BC was when Mahavira uh, was born. And that's when Jair was, was around, I mean, born and expired both. But at that time is when Jainism got formed. Uh, I'm not sure because if that was when it got formed, he's 24th in the line of 24. So obviously it was before that. So not sure if what your research has shown, but if you haven't done any research on that, I'm okay. But that was the context of the question. 
our scriptures say it's anadi and anant and but history books right, exactly history. of course of course mm, right exactly okay so history question. and why fifth century so fifth century that's a whole mess too because in this, in james scriptures it says he dies in 527 bce so they put him in the sixth century bce so then but when you read textbooks they put him in the fifth century bce why is that there's a whole set of literature on uh that by mostly germans um and so these orientalists are based off the inscriptions of ashoka so we have ashoka in the third century bce and we have ashoka's adoption of language of dharma and maybe buddhism so then they say, well, okay, that means Buddhism definitely existed then. And um, in the Buddhist scriptures, it seems like Mahavira was an older contemporary of the Buddha. So maybe let's put the Buddha in the 4th century BCE and Mahavira in the 5th century BCE. That's legit what they're doing. We don't know, like, really, when these people lived. So let's maybe believe what the scriptures say, which is he died in 527 BCE, uh, Mahavira, and put him in the 6th century BCE. Okay, that's done. Now the question is, is it Anadi? That's, that's the answer. I can't I can't answer that question for you. Again, the scriptures say it is so great because the, the, he was the final of the 24 Tirtakras in this period. Before that, there were 24. Exactly. Before that, there were 24. In the future, there will be more 24, more 24, more. Yeah. So when we're talking about history, actual data that we know that is real, we have very, we we don't have a lot of it. We don't have inscriptions, for example, from the 5th century BC that we can point to and say, this is a material that we can date. So we, we only get these inscriptions at the time of Ashoka. And then every, all of that is dated. All this stuff, dating the Vedas, dating all of this. I don't believe any of it, really. <laughs> I don't know. No, I mean, it's you. all spe it's all speculative. It's all speculative. Yeah. So all thank you. Things. Unless anyone else on the call has any extra knowledge, I'm happy to pass this on, Pramod. Thank, <clears throat> yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah. So we'll take a question from Samni Shashiji. Could you please unmute yourself? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Actually, I want to say that uh, in Bhagavad the sutra we are getting the uh, you know, reference of this um, namaskar mahamantra in the first it, chapter in the beginning and so it has shruta now, it has shruta right what i was just looking that up it has an extra line no no five five, five mantras namo arantanam namo siddhanam namo ayayanam namo vajjhanam namo loye savasanam five pad are there in first chapter of bhagavai in the first chapter of Bhagavad we get this. And there is also one uh, Namo Suya Nanam, Namo Bambi, Bambiye Liviye. That is right. also there. Right. So right. you cannot That's say that uh, yeah. uh, in scriptures we don't find Namaskar Mahamantra's reference. In uh, Bhagavad Sutra is considered as the encyclopedia of Jainism. And in that we get uh, in the very beginning of the first chapter, we get this reference. And secondly, right. we get in second Agama, Avashak Sutra. In that also, we get uh, Namaskar Mahamantra reference. Right. So this is the thing. They've all been dated. And this comes back to this question of history. Those texts have all been dated later than the Shatkandagam. Uh, definitely can, can debate that. So the Mulachara, the Gumbar Mulachara is very yeah. similar. The eighth chapter, mm -hmm. right? That mm -hmm. also has... Uh, mm -hmm. Namokar Mantra. It's very similar to the Avashika Sutra. And it has been dated... is very later. Mulachar text is written uh, by Vattake. It is very later development. That text is right. secondary source. Uh, scriptures okay. are the main source. Original scriptures. Okay. Original, okay. original text. So you should, okay. whenever we try to quote, I think we should quote the Bhagavad is the first, the foremost uh, reference place where we get the Namaskar Mahamantra. And second is Vavashyak Sutra. And in Shatkhandagam also we get, we get the reference, but we consider Kundukund as after the Agam period. Because Kundukunda Kundu Kundu did Kundu not compose the Shatkhandagam. Shatkhandagam is an Agam. It is the words of Mahavira. Yeah, yeah. I, I consider, I consider it as Agam. Shatkhandagam is not Kundukunda. It was not no, composed it's by not, Sorry, sorry. I told Kundukunda. It is not written by Kundukund. But it is after Agam, 32 Agamas. Shatkandagam is returned after 32 Agamas. That's what I want to see. Okay. I'll, I'll just say, yeah. 
I'll just say that this is, I think this will probably come up again and again in the class that there'll be sectarian debates. So, I mean, that's a very straight number of perspective. Okay. And when we look at the Mulachara and the Avashika Sutra, they're very, very similar. And they probably emerged from the same source. Mm -hmm. And um, Shatkandagam is said to be the words of Mahavira. And scholars have dated it to, to er, much, much earlier than the Bhagavati Sutra. So that's this is, this is what's difficult about this is history stuff is... Yeah, Bhagavati is such an important scripture for Shvetambaras, but the Gambaras don't even accept it as, as the words of Mahavira. So what do we do then? When someone asks me, like, where does the Namukar Mantra come from? And I say mm. Bhagavati, mm. and it's a Digambara, they'll say, no, mm. no, 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 Chatkandagam. And then your response is, no, 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 Bhagavati Sutra. So, right. I don't know. I and I, what, all I can say is, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. Sorry, exactly. it is a kind of, I understand, Digambar scholars and Shwetambar scholars, they do agree that in, in both the texts, in both the original texts, we find the namas, source of Namaskar Mahamantra. Because yeah. we believe in the philosophy of Anekan. We accept that there is a reference of uh, Namaskar Mahamantra in Shakhandagam and Mulachar. They should also accept that in Shwetambar Bhagavati and in Avashik Sutra also there is reference. That's all. There is that's we should uh, uh, accept the points of agreements. We should not consider the points of disagreements between the Shwetambaka and Digambar. We are all Jains. There is no two traditions at all. It is only for the sake of uh, mutual understanding. We have to understand this. And we accept with broad minded, broad mind, and we are very liberal, liberal, and we accept we are very flexible also. As we are the followers of Anekan philosophy, we should accept. This very frankly, we we do ex uh, respect the Shatkandam Shatkandagam text, Mulachar text, and their quotes also. They should mm -hmm. agree that there is also uh, some reference in Bhagavad and Avachak also. That's what right. I want. Yes, right. yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes. Yeah, absolutely. Pra absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pravinsa, do you have uh, anything to add on to this, sir? Yeah. Hi, just uh, very quickly, uh, when it comes to history uh, uh, when we talk about jain philosophy the the anadi shabd refers to jain philosophy in the in in the sense that philosophy of ahinsa and karuna and all that is and the teachings by our tirthankaras have been here forever will stay forever but the structured jain dharma it just came many centuries after mahavir because Mahavir does not even use the word Jain Dharma or Jain and something. He just talks about the philosophy. So I think that is how we need to look at Jain Dharma may be dated, but Jain philosophy has been here forever. I like that. Yeah, yes, I, perfect. I, I... Yes, agreed. Totally. Good. Thanks so much. You all too, if you have questions, please go ahead and ask. And uh, Pramoji, uh, can our students directly uh, connect with uh, Ms. Ellen, uh, you know, through email or whichever way, if you can introduce that uh, or let us know uh, about Ellen, it. Uh, yeah, I, I will ask Ellen right here. I'll put her on a spot and then ask her, is it okay if I share your email address with this? Uh, oh, group? yes. Yes, I'm really open. I really want to learn. It seems like I can learn a ton from you. So please, yes, email me all your thoughts. Because I'm I'm very open. <clears throat> All right, lovely. That's so nice of you. Yes. One uh, guidance which you could give the students is when they approach your lectures, uh, what's the mindset they should go and how should they maybe like uh, take notes and really uh, involve themselves so that they could go deeper it would be valuable to the audience here because I think yeah, they're I... a little bit uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my mind, I think the mindset should be that this I'm sharing with you on my research as a, a work in progress. And I recognize that my knowledge is super, super limited. So if we can develop a sort of conversation 
about mm. the lectures, that would be, this is, I'm being selfish, basically. But what I want you to do is come back to me and say exactly what was just said. Oh, you forgot about the Avashika Sutras. Like, oh, you forgot about this. You forgot about this. You forgot about this. What about this? What about this? What about that? That's what I would love. I, I don't want you to approach it in terms of like memorizing whatever I say or anything like that, but engaging with me as someone who's trying to figure this out and recognizes that it's really hard to figure uh, this out. We, and someone who understands that, yeah, Jain philosophy is eternal, but how are we like dating and understanding the historical developments of this Jain philosophy on the ground amongst humans with limited knowledge? Yes. So I think that's, yeah, should be. The Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, um, yeah, I think, um, um, yeah, Pramoji, I would, uh, right. Yeah, yeah so, I feel like, you know, yeah, more, more, more or uh, less. What, uh, sorry, Smitaji. Uh, yeah, please, go ahead. We're speaking over uh, each other. I'm sorry about that. Uh, what we will do now is we will send you instructions for core uh, week two and uh, and really focus for the next session. We'll only focus on week two material. So, and then if you have questions around week two uh, material, I would uh, encourage you to go to the lectures maybe once, maybe twice as you, as time permits. And we'll have a discussion. In the meanwhile, I will share the email address of Professor as well, so you can engage in a debate. And uh, we will have another uh, email if you want to CC. You should feel free, such that everybody can actually benefit from the interaction with the Professor as well. And uh, I think there are certain quizzes. Uh, there'll be a quiz after week three is what uh, we plan on uh, putting in so after week three there will be a quiz as well uh, which is a pass no pass kind of a quiz uh, mm -hmm. which will be part of this uh, course as well mm -hmm. sure so we will meet again uh, next uh, yes. friday at the same time so yes. keep the debate going and hopefully yes. we can engage on chapter one and chapter two uh, lesson one and lesson two in the next week yeah. Only request, my request is that uh, because it's a new course introduced in India so pe and across globe, so people are still joining and uh, their uh, first concern, primary concern is this, that, you know, are they too late to join and because you are dropping the material to uh, finish by week one, week two, I've been telling them it is, uh, this is just to keep you engaged and also not to uh, have any slag, not to lacking and it's, it's a key, so that you can finish the course, you know, within 10 weeks time That's so right. like that so the again i'm here i wanted to again mention over here to the audiences who have joined here that please take your time but of course uh consider these guidance which which is coming from arihanta institute to how to go about the courses that will keep you on track and then you will finish it um you know with the stipulated time and uh uh, and at the same time, it will keep you engaged so that you can move on to the next level or next whatever we are. We, we, we have to see a lot of things coming on our way. So this is the only thing. Otherwise, please do not get panicked that you are joining yesterday or you've joined the day before and course has already started and how to go about it. Isn't it, that's, Pramoji? That's correct. Yes, it's a self-paced uh, course. What we wanted to do is engage in a way such that the cohort goes together. And, that's, and then we could uh, find time with the professor as well. Otherwise, uh, the instructions are all there. It's a self-paced, uh, self-learning, self-paced course. So you could learn at your own. So there's nothing to panic. Uh, all material will be available. These recordings will be available as well. Yeah, And yeah. the email address, of course, will be available to engage with the professor. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, one more thing is that uh, the group, uh, is, uh, group is going to be open uh, for the next two days. Please drop your messages, your queries over there also. Uh, we have uh, Pramoji over there um, and we are uh, Jane Foundation team over there. Anything that you have to ask, you can ask there. You can also directly connect with us. And later on, we will use this group not just for uh, question and uh, query solving and all. We'll also use this course to understand how much you have progressed like uh, like any other uh, Jane Foundation groups. We, uh, we encourage students to share their of audios or videos related to the topic subject matter which they have understand and which they want to you know showcase to the teacher directly so you can also post your videos or and audios about the one particular topic and you know that can be you know send it to the teacher uh, like that so you know in many ways we're going to enter we make this course interactive so stay tuned and uh, 
be there on the group. Do not drop the group because mostly the, uh, there is the two-way communication happening. One is directly you getting the communication on your email IDs. But if you stay connected to the group, you will be having uh, all the more information over there because Jane Foundation's intervention or Jane Foundation support will also be, uh, be, be, will be provided. And we are going to be uh, sharing for those related to uh, information will be only shared on the group. So this is one request, do not drop the group, stay there until you finish the, your course, all right? So yes, uh, Pramoji, I think uh, uh, we can uh, take our leave and uh, we can again, yeah, um, I would, yeah. <laughs> it's time now. Thanks again, uh, Ms. Ellen, mm. uh, thank you so much for your precious time. Thank you so much, Praveen, sir, for joining us. And uh, of course, next session uh, we will have before uh, we will have a couple of more um, ideas on how to go about the session. We will collect the questions before the session so that you can have a back-to-back, -back, uh, um, um, you know, resolvings and uh, discussions. And uh, yes, thank you, Pramodji, for uh, doing it and making it possible. And please, uh, two words from you, and you can, yeah, you can. Yeah, this. Uh, thank you again, yes. and uh, thank you for taking time to. Uh, engage in this uh, session so uh, look forward to seeing you uh, next week yeah all the best thank you so much jai jinendra sabiko jai jinendra jai jin.